So, whenever you're ready, can you explain what you put together? Okay, so uh, high level overview time. Um, we set out to basically kind of replicate, I guess, like a basic commercial audio synthesizer. Um, and so we have um, our digital uh, audio synthesis, um, our little keyboard, and a bunch of little fun knobs, buttons, sliders, etc., um, to change the settings. Um, we wanted to try and do all the audio synthesis digitally so we have more room for the rest of the circuit stuff. Um, and so that was a bunch of fun filter calculations. Um, and also we decided it took a while to figure out what things we actually wanted to implement because um, there's a bunch of other like sound design things that we could have done. But um, for the sake of like time, reasonability, uh -huh. um, we settled on um, having one oscillator with varying shapes um, with uh, a packet envelope that you can change the parameters on. We added in three different filter types with two cutoff frequencies um, for the band pass. And then we have a low frequency oscillator, which we went go from like frequency of one all the way to a thousand for fun. Um, so not very low, but um, you can make it low, and that um, is applied to the filter. Okay. Yeah. And I guess to just demonstrate like some of the things Tommy was talking about that we're manipulating, so you can change the uh, shape of the sound wave. So right now, as you can see, one is regular sine wave. So can you push that again, and I'll show the waveform. Oh yeah, sure. Um, so we have a, um, a slider that and a knob that allows us to select um, what things we want to change, and the knob allows us to change them. So yeah, sorry. One is the sinusoidal waveform. Okay. And then if I move this slider up, I change the um, setting to two, which is a triangular waveform. Three is a square waveform. <laughs> and then lastly is the sawtooth. Cool. Okay. Mm. I like that one. I don't know. It sounds cool. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, amplitude is another. Um, <laughs> amplitude is another parameter that we're allowed to change, but I so I might actually reduce that a bit. You guys are okay with that? Oh, wait, sorry. This is um. A lot of the hardware was uh, done by Ralph, but he'll um he'll explain more about it okay, later. Okay, <laughs> sure. Yeah, and then um, each key is um, like a capacitive, is linked to like a capacitive touch sensor, which allows us to play twelve different notes. So you made these keys out of what, aluminum foil? Yeah, yeah. Okay. and an exacto knife. Yes. We just chop that right out. Okay, okay. Yeah, you yeah. chopped up the ground plate. Mm -hmm. Do you want to yes. turn it around so you can see the like circuit? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they're all hooked up to a 12 key capacitive touch breakout board. Okay, I can see it in there. Only yeah. needs two pins on the high eco for all 12. Um, okay. Which saves a lot of space. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, Tommy ported over the library for both the TFT and for the capacitive touch, so that's why we we're able to use both the TFT and the capacitive touch. Um, and so I can talk a little bit about the hardware. Sure. Um, so yeah, we have four buttons. So the first button is like on off for each one of the settings. The second one is um, to look at the oscilloscope set or oscillator settings, look at the filter settings, and to look at the LFO settings. So you can just select that using these three buttons. Um, this knob is a rotary encoder. And what we have is we have a little selector, which is like shown by this little circle. Uh -huh. um, and what that lets us do is we can move the knob and we can change our selection. And so that lets us select what variable we want to change using this potentiometer. Um, so you can see that the cool. frequency is changing. Yeah. Yeah. But we also made it so that like when we go to a different variable, it doesn't change this, but only starts changing when you start moving this potentiometer. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, we also have the TFT. So the TFT, um, we actually originally had the VGA, now we went to the TFT just to have it more compact um, and easier to use. And so yeah, um, we have basically three big sets of variables for each one of the, um, the screens and settings, and those are all linked um, to the uh, FFT and all the other audio synthesis functions. And so this lets us be able to show everything, display everything, 
um, really easily and we can mo modulate all the variables and make sure that they actually reflect in all the sound. But yeah, and then we also have all the circuits in the back sure. um, and then just the entire um, cardboard and hot glue construction to kind of just reduce <laughs> sensitivity. Um, since the capacitive touch wires, if you actually move them, it'll actually do the same thing as if I'm pressing a key. So we had to like make sure that they like would not move whatsoever. Right, <laughs> okay. So yeah. So yeah, um, does anybody want to give a demonstration of like playing on the piano? I, I can't play on this 12 piece keyboard, <laughs> uh, but, um, oh, fun things to note, the only variable that's affected by the um, actual code and not user input is the frequency of the note you're playing. Um, okay. So we make that, we made that change um, based on the key, mm -hmm. um, just for fun purposes, I guess. Yep. Um, and also, uh, for the, uh, what was it called? Oh yeah, we never actually demonstrated the filters. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Rhea, do you want right. to demonstrate some of the filters? Uh, yeah, sure. So like Raphael mentioned, you have like this yellow button is like an on-off key. And then mm -hmm. these three keys are basically like different menus that you can select between. So the first menu I did most of the demonstration on, that's just like the basic um, oscillator synthesizer. Um, so one of the, uh, okay, actually, yeah, let's do filtering first. <laughs> <laughs> so we implemented um, low pass, high pass, and band pass filters. The type, as you can see here, is uh, user adjustable. So first filter that we're implementing right now is low pass. Um, the filter is on. Okay. It's kind of hard to tell like, what sound comes out of. Yeah. And then uh, cutoff one corresponds to the low pass cutoff frequency. So if we like make it really high, it shouldn't sound that different. But I can actually, I'll show the waveform here. Yeah, yeah. You can see that oh, that is the square wave getting low pass, right? Yeah. Wait, no, that's actually a... Okay, wait, this is a square wave getting a little past. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then, if I just reduce the cutoff frequency even further, it'll probably look more like a sine wave. Yeah. Yep. Or trapezoidal, if you will. Very oh. cool. And this is me, like, slowly increasing the cutoff frequency. becomes more square wave. Oh, so you can do it dynamically as the sound's playing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. we have interrupts that are constantly sampling user input and adjusting. Okay. That was fun to implement. Yeah, okay, sorry. Um, uh, let's see, do you want to do LFO with band pass? I feel like that's a fun one because it sounds so weird. Uh, so type 3 is the band pass filter. Mm -hmm. uh, you turn on the filter and then turn on LFO, which is a low frequency oscillator. So. Um, what LFO does is it changes, it dynamically adjusts the cutoff frequencies and time. So we have a bandpass filter, but the LFO will, um, yeah, change the cutoff frequency. So it, it, it's, it just sounds really weird and kind of fun. Sure. <laughs> so it's setting, the LFO sets the frequency with which the filter settings are modified? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, Let's see what kind of LFO we want to do. Let's stick with the basic sign. Okay, <laughs> that was fun to implement. Mm. Um, yeah, sometimes uh, depending on the filter and the, especially the cutoff. Oh frequency, wait, yeah, that was my bad. Um, it'll completely just block stuff. Oh way. sure. Yeah, because the sorry, cutoff one is our lower cutoff and cutoff two is our higher cutoff. Yeah, I so accidentally. Like 100, 100 for like cutoff one, you think? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you filtered out the whole. That was. Yeah, that was, I was like, yeah. okay. Yeah. What happened? Um, yeah, that's what <laughs> yeah, happened. Yeah, it's kind of unpredictable because there's a lot of variables. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And we can see on the waveform. Yeah. Yeah. If you change the frequency up really high, it starts. Oh yeah, that's that, that's really fun. Then it's like. Sounds just totally weird when you get yeah. the sound. So if you push it again. <laughs> cool. Yeah. That's most of the functionality. Yeah. Could you, are you able to turn up the frequency of the LFO a little bit higher so we can hear the difference? Oh, sorry. Um, 1000 is the most we can go to. Oh, okay. Okay. We could, it'll kind of just stop. It'll change, like, yeah. 
Oh yeah, it just like cuts out, yeah. Because it's from zero to one, so the elephant will just like... Yeah. <laughs> it just does whatever it wants. Yeah. That's cool. Wait, what else do you want to try? Like, up the frequency on this one. Uh, alright, alright. Oh yeah. This is gonna be a fun one. Yeah, because there's just like so many different types to choose from. Sure. You probably haven't even like tested out all the possible combinations. Um, it's mostly self-contained too, it just needs the audio jack and oh, okay. some sort of power source. Sure, so yeah. as, as far as external stuff plugged in, it's the USB that powers the Pico mm -hmm. and an audio jack into the yeah. speakers. Yep, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Really, really nice. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>